80s Dan is filmed in front of a live thuggy sacrifice. Horrendous. Poppy shit. Horrendous poppy shit. Anus bubble. Cancer sore. Vomit dick. Douche sucker. Turd. Well, I for one loved it. Shut up, Rob. You're a dick. I can't believe they made another Indiana Jones movie. I can't believe they made it so god awful. Years of waiting and this is what they give us. A human being cannot survive a nuclear blast in a fridge. What yeah, the right? And there was like okay. a hand, like, Shut up! Yeah, I mean, it's all like, totally yeah. useless anyway. The original trilogy is perfect. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Last Crusade. And of course, the best out of all of them. Temple of Doom. I love I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt via bad green screen effect. I don't even know where you guys are positioned. Hopefully you're looking in my direction, but I'm sorry, I can't let this fly! What are you talking about, 80s Doug? Temple of Doom sucks! Yeah, I know people really hate Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but how come Temple of Doom always gets a free pass? It has some of the silliest scenarios, the stupidest lines, and the most obnoxious characters. So how come this one usually gets overlooked whenever talking about bad Indiana Jones flicks? Because it's awesome! It's not! It's terrible! And to prove it, I'm gonna go over and show just how friggin' silly this film is! <sighs> You're gonna find something silly in an Indiana Jones film? <laughs> Good luck there, pal! Let's begin. Well, at least to its credit, it does start off like an Indiana Jones movie. I mean, you got the mountains, the rough and gruff tone, the epic feel of adventure, the... Dancing Broadway singer, the line chorus, the tap dancing number... Did I just pop in a copy of That's Entertainment by mistake? What the hell is this? Would you ever guess this is an Indiana Jones movie just by the opening? Well, that's why it's so great. It plays with your expectations, and it catches you off guard. But it has nothing to do with anything. I keep expecting the cast of Blazing Saddles to bust in. This on you. I'm working for Mel Brooks. Well, it turns out this musical number was at a high-class restaurant in Shanghai. Though where they hit that giant soundstage they were dancing in earlier is anybody's guess. Of all the lame-ass sequels and lame-ass franchises, Lucas had to make one in mine. You found much. You know I did. So Indy's about to exchange an ancient artifact, but not until he gets paid. But they don't want to pay until they get the artifact. He's going to deliver him now. Say, who is this, Nerha? Hachi! Our hero, everybody! When he's not holding knives to women's backs, he's drowning puppies in buckets of poison. And again, I guess Indy always has been a bit of a prick when it comes to helping women. He holds a knife to his future love interest, he finds his other girlfriend kidnapped only to leave her behind. He has another chance to save her, but throws it away just to see what's in the box! And Elsa, well... She was a Nazi anyway. The Diamond Lao. You bring me Nuhachi. Hachi's a real small guy. Yeah, that galaxy of non-pleasure is known as Kate Capshaw, playing the ever-annoying love interest, Willie. He put two holes in my dress from Paris. She's so obnoxious that even when Indy is poisoned and threatens to kill her for the antidote, the gangsters don't give a shit. You give it a go, I find another. <laughs> I wish the screenwriters had the same attitude. <laughs> Indy has a backup waiter, but he just proves to be a wasted script page. Indy! Don't worry, we'll I'm gonna get you out of here. Not this time, Indy. I followed you on many adventures. None of which we'll address or make movies about. Into the great unknown mystery. I go first, Indy. Farewell, totally pointless Lucas character. You'll be buried next to Mac from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and the Bothans from Star Wars. But he offers a shishka die, and there's an all-out melee for the antidote and the diamond. Oh, 
Thank God they have the world's slowest moving knives. But he manages to fight his way out using the cover of balloons! Fire! Now I introduce you to the second most annoying character in this movie. That pile of puke from Goonies, Short Round. I know you're picking on a kid that's just low. It's not like he was Jake Lloyd. Oh, that kid was shit. You cheat, Dr. Jones! You cheat! Yeah, I don't care if he's a kid. I don't care if that's his real accent or not. The squirt is fucking obnoxious! Why? Because he shouts every single one of his lines! You say to stand against the wall! Dr. Jones, what are you look at? Don't drink a spit! Every other line he says in this movie, he screams at the top of his lungs. And is there anything more annoying than someone that just screams every other line they say? I mean, that's really obnoxious! But on the plus side, at least we know Lucas would never partake in another overly annoying racial stereotype in his film career. He'd just save himself for the especially annoying ones. Step on it! Okie dokie, Dr. Jones, hold on to your potato! Try that now, there's a kid driving the car! Oh, come on, it's China. The kid should have, like, five jobs by now. Where's my gun? Where's my gun? I burnt my fingers and I cracked a nail! That's right, folks. We just did a broke a nail joke. We've successfully insulted both women and Chinese, and we haven't even gotten to the Indian stereotypes yet. Let's celebrate with a pointless Dan Aykroyd cameo. Ah, Dr. Jones, I'm R. Weber. I spoke with your assistant. Uh, we've managed to secure three seats. But there might be a slight inconvenience as you will be riding on a cargo full of live poultry. <laughs> and we wonder why we don't see him in movies anymore. <laughs> nice try, Lao Che! But it turns out the plane has been sabotaged by Lao Che, and they- Oh, I remember, he has the most diabolical plans for them. Oh, what? Do the pilots slit their throat while they're asleep, or shoot him in the back or something? No. They conveniently fly him all the way to India, then jump out of the plane, leaving all their cargo behind. Well, wait, why the hell did they do that? They jump out of the plane into the middle of nowhere. They're in the mountains. They had a plane, and they just jumped out of it. Wouldn't it have made more sense if they just killed them and then still delivered that cargo to their destination? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Did she really just bite her fist? Why don't you just give her a frying pan and a rolling pin throughout this movie? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't care if it's Indiana Jones, that is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. I mean, I gotta be honest, it's gonna be really hard to top that. No, 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 no! So let me get this straight. Surviving an explosion in a fridge is going too far, but this, this is totally believable. This is not going beyond any realm of plausibility that you would find distracting. Well, yeah, that was a fridge. This is a raft. Yeah, they're totally different. They come across an Indian Doc Brown, and he shows them their village, where apparently their evil government has taken a magic stone, which caused all the water to dry up and the crops to die. And apparently they took all their children away as well and forced them into manual labor. Most likely stolen by this man. They do this because... children make better workers than adults twice their size and strength? This is intolerable! So the mission is on for Indy to find the stone and bring back the children. Well, obviously, this is too dangerous to bring a small child and a useless comic relief when- God damn it! I can't go to Pankot! I'm a singer! Oh, I need to call my agent. Is there a phone? Anybody? I need a phone! Why does he bring her along anyway? I mean, the kid, odd to say, can be useful sometimes, but she has literally done nothing to contribute. Is it just that the village doesn't want to put up with her anymore? Oh, I need to call my agent. Is there a phone? Anybody? I need a phone!
Well, maybe somewhere down the line she'll do something of value. Oh, God. Oh, quit complaining. This is expensive stuff. <sighs> oh, pipe down, you big baboon. This doesn't hurt. You know what you really need? You really need a bath. This is why Superman works alone. That's right, movie. You made me quote Batman and Robin. This character is so horrible that I was forced to use a Batman and Robin quote. I was happy in Shanghai. My friends were with me with the parties all the time in limousines. I being outside. Shut up! I can't stand it anymore. I'm changing my top 11 dumbasses in distress. I'm switching her out with Jubilee and putting Willie in the number 5 spot. Yeah, Jubilee's fashion sense was much weirder, but you know what? She fucking tried. Her? Oh, Christ! Take her out, Marion! My God, she's awesome. I think we'll camp here tonight. Well, at least they decided to burn her. That's the least this movie can offer us. We got... What, did they take a shortcut through the Pancock Zoo? Every animal in the world is in this friggin' area! All we need is Pee Wee Herman to turn on his goggle lights! Why are you dragging us off to this deserted palace? That's Shiva, and what's he handing the priest? Rock. I told him to go forth and combat evil. And to help him, he gave him five sacred stones with magical properties. Magic rocks, fortune, and glory. Sweet dreams, Dr. Jones. I believe in the magic carpenter who came back to life as a zombie, thank you very much. So they make it to the palace where they seem to be greeted with friendly people. This is Miss Scott. Uh, this is Mr. Round. Shut Round. My name is Indiana Jones. So they meet the ruler, Maharaja. Verdict still out on the gender there. And we partake in one of the more famous scenes of the movie. You're not eating? I have bugs for lunch. You know, as a person who loves Indian food, I should be insulted by how culturally insensitive this is. But if there is a culture that can make this stuff taste good, by God, it's the Indian culture! So I'll give it a pass. Chilled a monkey brain. Come on, lady. What do you think you're gonna eat when the original caretaker from The Shining is at the head of your table? There are no stories anymore. So the Prime Minister says he never heard anything about stones of power or kidnapping children, which means this gives Indy plenty of time to check on his Willy. No, I'm not kidding. That's literally how he puts it. I think I'll just check on Willy. Check out the reaction on that kid. If a man said he was going to check on his Willy in front of me, I would have the exact same reaction. Uh, I think I'll just... Check on Willie. That's all you better do. Thus, Indy goes to gaze at his Willie, and we partake in romantic banter. I'm a scientist. So, as a scientist, you do a lot of research? Always. Now I see you left your soft focus on. But it turns out they both want to play hard to get, and they go to their rooms waiting for the other one to enter. Okay, Williams, tone down the whimsy on the comedy music. You're making Looney Tunes music look subtle. Go on. Really? The kid is sleeping through all of this? Surely the sound of people not laughing at Kate Capshaw's jokes would have woken him up eventually. <laughs> and that wins for a silliest Indiana Jones death. And given the death scenes in these movies, that's pretty impressive. So Indy finds a secret passage in one of the rooms and brings down the grown, mature adult to accompany him. Oh wait, no, sorry, he brings Short Round with him instead. 
because she is literally so goddamn annoying that the young little Chinese boy who can barely speak English is actually more useful. Indy! But they get caught in a booby trap, which I guess makes sense. It was introduced to them by a booby door, and Willie has to go in and save them. Do it. Feel inside. You feel inside. Do it now. Okay. You know what? Let it crush us. It's more dignified to go out this way than to know we had to be saved by her. They escape the trap and work their way to a sacrifice that I'm sure the Hindu religion is totally behind. It's a thuggy ceremony. They're worshipping Kali. Oh no, it's the Mano's hands of fake guy. Hey, give some credit. That guy's phony baloney nonsense is probably closer to a real religion than this one is. And? Because all religions are 100% factual in the world of Indiana Jones, the stones do in fact have supernatural powers. It's weird, they even reference the coexistence of other gods in this movie. Then the Hebrew god will fall, and then the Christian god will be cast down and forgotten. These films should be called Coexist the Bumper Sticker the Movie. And apparently those stones do some really freaky ass shit too. <laughs> Jesus Christ movie! I mean, I know the Indiana Jones films can be crazy in their death scenes, but holy shit! This is like something a psycho would write! Yeah, it's like how they fire journalists at Fox News! <laughs> so, once Indy sees, they just use the stones to creatively kill people and... I don't know, make jack-o'-lanterns. He sneaks towards the holy relic, with no guards of course, and takes it for his own. But he hears the sounds of children in distress and sees that the villains are using them to mine for more magic stones. I hope, I hope, it's home from Earth All of them get captured trying to save the kids, and honestly, this is one of my major problems with the movie. It's just downright unpleasant. I mean, yeah, the other films have creepy scenes and crazy visuals and such, but the whole middle of this movie is just dark caves, people being whipped, and children in pain. Yeah, fucking sign me up for that, please! I pray to Shiva, let me die, but I do not. The other films could get grim, but there was a sense of fun and clever lightheartedness to set it off. I said clever lightheartedness! This is mostly just watching people suffer. It's not fun and it doesn't add to anything particularly dramatic, so it just seems sort of needlessly cruel. Oh come on, it has a point. It's to make the villain more memorable. Yeah, everyone remembers Creepy Weird Skull Hat Guy. Oh yeah? What's his name? Creepy Weird Skull Hat Guy. Duh. <sighs> <laughs> 80s Dan meets the Nostalgia Critic, who will be right back after these messages. We now return to 80s Dan meets the Nostalgia Critic. Hello? You guys okay?
So they take him to the torture chamber. They try to make him drink from Dawson's head, but he does the unthinkable. He spits it out! <gasps> Holy shit, no one's ever thought about doing that, wow! But they beat the crap out of the little kid to force him to drink it. <laughs> So the juice apparently turns Indiana Jones into Bizarro Indiana Jones, totally possessed by the worst of humanity. Metachlorians is a great idea. <laughs> this leads him to try and sacrifice Willy to the lava pit. Okay, maybe he's not totally possessed by the worst of humanity. I'm not gonna have anything nice to say about this place when I get back! The feeling's mutual about your performance, honey. The villain, for some reason, doesn't take her heart out. A shame, I was looking forward to rewinding that a few times. But the kid manages to escape his chains and try to help Indy. How come he's the only kid who figured out how to break his bonds? Did really none of the other kids figure out just to smash the chains with a digging tool? Maybe being a Chinese kid, he's used to escaping physical labor. Sadly, though, he isn't able to snap Indy out. Wake up, Dr. Joe! Wake up! I love this scene. It's nothing but abuse to Willie in short round. I could watch it forever. Wake up, Indy! A short round burns Indy's ribs with fire, which somehow affects his stomach and or brain, and brings him back to normal. Oh, come on, the other guy was set on fire when he was that close. Her perfume alone has to be flammable. Until next time, Batman! <laughs> so he pulls his willy out. But she isn't aware if it's him or not. So she slaps him. Making a punch sound effect for some reason. Until she realizes he's back. So they all go to save the kids. Strike that. Indian short round go to save the kids while Willie just watches. God, I hate her. While Indy has his battle with the second to last boss you usually fight at the end of a video game. Hi. You know, the fight choreography in this ranges from action-packed to goofy cartoon. Oh, save me, tiny little Asian boy! I hope Indy never knows he can do better than me. They get to the mining car to escape, and... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is actually a pretty cool action scene. It's weird how the kid's arms and legs suddenly grow double their size when they're fighting over him. He looks like a Chinese Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> they get split up and, big shock, Willie and Short Round are captured. <laughs> oh come on lady, Tommy was so yelling is less over the top than that! <laughs> You're tearing me apart, creepy weird skull hat guy! And I think most of you know this setup. He's in the middle of the bridge and is looking for a way out. Prepare to meet Kali in hell. <laughs> I couldn't resist. No, here's what really happens. God, those gators only have a taste for black cloth. I think the real guy swam away like a minute ago. Here's another silly moment. Indy actually makes the guy punch himself. Oh! Were half of these fight scenes choreographed by a fifth grader? Quit sacrificing yourself to Kali! Quit sacrificing yourself to Kali! Let's take it out! And I'm not sure what the point of this is. Haha, <laughs> 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 now I don't have to pay for his health care. <laughs> They fight over the stones when Indy says one of the more strange lines in the movie. You betrayed Shiva. He says the magic words and the rock burn out of the bag with the villain falling quickly behind, but what I don't get is why he's so pissed that he betrayed Shiva. He said it was all mumbo-jumbo earlier in the film, so why is he suddenly so invested? 
Luke the Trade Shiva. I will totally steal Jewish artifacts and become immortal, but anyone who betrays Shiva, fuck you! So Indy saves his Willy, gets one of the stones back, and returns the children to the village. No more adventures with you, Dr. Jones. Sweetheart. After all the fun we've had together. If you think I'm going to Delhi with you or any place else after all the trouble you've gotten me into, think again, Buster. I'm going home to Missouri where they never feed you snakes before ripping your heart out. It's official. We're editing you out of the special edition. We'll just replace you with Jabba the Hutt or something. Sir, I need a guide to Delhi. If you could show me the way. Uh, yeah. One fractured hip later. So Indiana Jones whips his willy, gets his willy wet, and even kisses his willy in front of all these innocent children. What else can you say but feel so wrong? There, that was Temple of Doom, by far the best Indiana Jones film ever. Ah, uh, jeez, really? After all that? Well, you know, it's very campy, it has a dark tone, and it takes itself probably more serious than it needs to, just like a real B-movie serial. Part of the fun is that it is so over the top and intense, unlike Crystal Skull, which was more safe and forgettable. Well, to your credit, I can kind of see where you're coming from. Well, I don't think it's a good movie, and I mean by any means. You can at least make the argument that it is an unforgettable movie, and that at least it went all the way with what it was doing. Where Crystal Skull technically doesn't have as many bad things in it, it also didn't take as many risks and left very little of an impact on most audiences. So when you get down to it, I guess the real question is, what's worse? Something horrible, but at least memorable? Or something average, but totally forgettable? Whichever one means Temple of Doom, I'm down for that. Is down for that technically an 80s term? Don't question my reality. So, I guess the debate for which is the worst Indiana Jones movie is still up for arguing. But there is one thing that I know for sure. I am so glad that I do not have to live in the 80s anymore. It's okay. They're glad not to have you. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and thanks for the team at 80s, Dan, for getting through this movie with me. There's only one way to end this, guys. Freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs>